President Rodrigo Duterte signs business deals worth 288 billion pesos during his working visit to Tokyo, Japan. Malacanang dismisses the remark of Philippine Ambassador Jose Laurel V that the trip to Japan was a post-election reward for members of the Duterte cabinet. Local government units inspect stores following the Food and Drug Administration's recall order on pork products from countries affected by the African swine fever. And a man who was seen in a video driving his car from the passenger seat may face serious charges for reckless driving and other violations. Good evening. Filipinos may expect more jobs after President Rodrigo Duterte's working visit in Japan. June Soryao will tell us why. The Philippines and Japan signed today 288 billion pesos worth of business agreements on the first day of the Philippines delegation working visit in Tokyo. According to Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez, the business agreements are expected to generate 82,000 jobs for Filipinos in the country. This aside from the job offers for Filipinos in Japan. Seven business agreements and 19 letters of intent in large Japanese firms were signed earlier today at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo. As you know, there are interested investors in transportation, in energy, uh, infrastructure, roads, uh, bridges, uh, and then some manufacturing under DTI. Kaya kita ninyo yung mga agreement signed, they're into almost everything. No, industrial, food, non-food, no, uh, even tourism related, uh, theme parks. President Rodrigo Duterte expressed thanks to the Japanese Business Leaders Trust and for their continuing support to his administration's goal. The president also vowed that no Japanese investor will experience corruption in the Philippines. May I just assure you that during my time, I said there will be no corruption. And every Japanese investor in my country, however small or however big, I can assure you that if there is any complaint regarding hindrances, obstruction, or outright corruption, let me know. And you can ask an audience with me in 24 hours and I will talk to you and just let me know what your problem is and we will kill that problem. The business agreements include manufacturing such as food production, transportation, energy, and infrastructure such as the construction of bridges and roads. The agreement also includes tourism and development of theme parks. On another note, the DTI secretary commented on the issue that their trip to Japan is a reward. He argued they did not campaign for any candidates in the recent elections. That is why they were not to receive any rewards. Lopez also clarified he was not offended by the remarks of Philippine ambassador to Japan, Jose Laurel V, saying it is not applicable. Obviously, hindi naman pabuya kasi una-una yung mga involved na secretaries dito, una hindi kami nag-campaign. So wala kaming nakikitang pabuya do. At every time lumalabas ang presidente, talagang sinusuportahan ng mga cabinet secretaries because we meet our counterparts. And as you can see, every time we go out, we report to you yung mga business deals na nangyayari uh, and the business-to-business -business things that are happening, the investment forum, the roundtable meetings with the president, ang daming trabaho ni presidente na umiikot din siya with the cabinet secretaries and meeting with the Filipino community and yung, yung bilaterals with, our, with the government like the prime minister or the head of the country, imimit ang presidente together with the cabinet. So it's a bilateral meeting. On the other hand, Manila Mayor-elect Isko Moreno, who is also present in Tokyo, said he was invited by the president, but the money spent for his trip came from his own pocket. No, I, I paid uh, my, with my personal money, uh, even my hotel. So, uh, we live in the same hotel. <laughs> All of us here. Uh, uh, basta, eh, itinalulugod ko lang na maging bahagi nito sapagkat I'm looking at this as an opportunity for the city of Manila. Jun Suryao, UNTV News and Rescue, Tokyo, Japan. 
Philippine Ambassador to Japan Jose Laurel V's statement of the Japan trip of some of President Rodrigo Duterte's cabinet members as babuya or reward has gone controversial. According to Executive Department Officer in Charge Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara, the palace has admonished the diplomat because of his remark. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Philippine Ambassador to Japan Jose C. Laurel V has been reproved by Executive Secretary Salvador Medeldea after his statement that the Tokyo trip of some of President Rodrigo Duterte's cabinet members was a pabuya or reward following the May polls. This is the response of Justice Secretary and appointed officer in charge of the Executive Department, Menardo Guevara, when asked if there will be disciplinary action imposed on the ambassador. Yesterday, Laurel said when interviewed by the media in Tokyo, the president is elated by the result of the midterm elections and that based on his personal opinion, the trip to Japan is a reward or pabuya for the cabinet members. Ito ay pabuya sa nakaraang eleksyon. Why do you bring 21, uh, 20 cabinet members here? Pati ang uh, local government or land reform. Wala naman land reform dito. Laurel's statement was refuted by the palace and the cabinet members said they are in Japan to do their job. Guevara, however, did not directly answer if Laurel will be removed from his post. Meanwhile, these pictures posted by blogger Jover Laurio, a critic of the Duterte administration, have been shared hundreds of times. The images show Philippine actors and actresses who traveled to Japan, including an avid supporter of President Duterte, Philip Salvador. Netizens have criticized this and questioned who financed the actor's foreign trips. One of those included in the picture is singer-actor Michael Pangilinan. He said he shouldered all his expenses for the trip. He added he volunteered to perform for the Filipino community gathering in Tokyo tomorrow and he did not receive payment for it. When sought for a comment, Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said these personalities came to Japan on their own accord. Based on Executive Order or EO No. 77, signed by President Duterte on March 15, 2019, private individuals and consultants shall not be issued foreign travel authorities and shall not be entitled to government funding for such trips. Spouses or children of government officials are also not allowed except when diplomatic protocol or established international practices provide otherwise. The president released the order in March to formally prohibit government junketeers. In Section 19 of EO 77, it clearly states that all forms of travel junkets shall be strictly prohibited. Workshops or team building activities abroad shall also be not allowed. Authorized official travel includes those which are essential to the effective performance of an official or employee's mandates or functions, required to meet the needs of the department or there is substantial benefit to be derived by the country. The presence of the official or employee is critical to the outcome of the activity and the projected expenses are not excessive. Meanwhile, any foreign travel should be approved by the Office of the President, Department Secretary, as well as heads of government agencies. While the official foreign travels of personnel in other branches of government shall be as prescribed by their respective heads. All official foreign trips, partially or fully sponsored or funded by private corporations or individuals, shall be fully disclosed. Private individuals or corporations with pending requests, applications or future dealings with any branch or office of the government are not allowed to fund directly or indirectly any official or personal travel of government officials. It can be recalled that President Duterte had dismissed various former government officials allegedly because of junkets, such as former chairperson of the Presidential Commission for the Urban Poor, Terry Ridon former Dangerous Drugs Board Chairman Junisio Santiago, former Maritime Industry Authority Administrator Marshal Kiriko Amaro III, and others. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang.
Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara has been named as the country's officer in charge, while President Rodrigo Duterte is in Tokyo, Japan for the 25th Nikkei International Conference. This is Guevara's fourth time to be assigned as the caretaker of the government. April Sinedoza explains why. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara faced various challenges when he served as the country's officer in charge during President Rodrigo Duterte's official trips in the past years. In a text message, he said among the challenges he encountered include the martial law declaration in Mindanao while the president was in Russia in May 2017 and revocation of Senator Antonio Trillanes IV's amnesty when the president was in Israel in September 2018. However, he fears nothing at this moment, he said. The president has assigned Guevara and you as the nation's caretaker while he is in Tokyo, Japan for the 25th Nikkei International Conference on the future of Asia. This is Guevara's fourth time to serve as the country's OIC. As stated in Special Order 528, released by Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea, the DOJ chief will serve as OIC of the Executive Department starting May 28 until June 1, 2019. Guevara confirmed he will remain at the DOJ office while fulfilling his responsibilities as the caretaker. The country's justice chief further said he has been tasked to take care of the executive department's day-to-day -day operations. He added he is also authorized to make certain decisions under the executive department except on appointments, confidential funds, and disciplinary matters, among others. Though he is the OIC, Guevara clarified his actions depend on the approval of the president, which Attorney Glenn Subia affirmed. Ang isang caretaker ng government, ang lahat ng action niyan ay manggagaling pa rin sa Pangulo, sa Presidente pa rin. Parang, parang speaker lang sa dyan, parang siyang repeater. Ibig sabihin niya, pag, pag may sinabi siya, ang nagsasalita doon ay ang Pangulo. Ito terte pa rin yun. Attorney Subia also stated Vice President Neni Robredo is unlikely to be chosen as the nation's caretaker because she and the president of different political parties. Subiya said the president is choosing among his cabinet members because they are his alter ego. It can be noted that Medialdea used to be the country's OIC during the previous working visits of Duterte in other countries. For the past several years, sa matandaan ko talaga, hindi magkapartido yung presidente at ang vice president niya. So from the beginning, hindi sila talaga pareho ng plataforma. Malago yan pa. Oh, okay In practice sa Pilipinas, ay malago. Ang chance lang niya talaga pag merong vacancy sa opisina ng presidente. As defined in Article 7, Section 8 of the 1987 Constitution, succession to the presidency by the vice president is only allowed in case of death, permanent disability, removal from office, or resignation of the president. The Constitution does not state that the vice president must be the acting president when the president is on official trip. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The government expects slower economic growth in the first semester of 2019 due to the El Nino phenomenon. Based on the preliminary estimate of the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, the reduction in the first quarter of 2019 growth due to the weak El Nino phenomenon is around 0.21%. Despite this, NEDA said the government is confident the country will hit the 6-7% to economic growth target for 2019. This is through the interventions the government is doing to lessen the impact of El Nino to the agricultural sector of the country. With respect to El Nino, uh, we are implementing interventions and uh, we are finding uh, uh, sources for the, those which uh, are not uh, funded right now in the agency's uh, regular budgets. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Administration, or PAGASA, forecasts five to eight tropical cyclones to enter the country from June to August. Based on the Weather Bureau's rainfall forecast, the onset of the rainy season in the western part of the country will be in the first part of June. Pagasa still regards this as within the normal onset of the rainy season.
based on our rainfall uh, forecast, the onset of the rainy season for areas under type 1 climate, this has, these are areas uh, along the western uh, side of the country, and this is associated with the Habagat or Southwest Monsoon, uh, it is expected to be during the first half of June. And in terms of our uh, forecast on the number of tropical cyclones, from June to August, we are expecting around five to eight tropical cyclones. Lightning has been frequently seen in the skies these past days. How does the natural occurrence affect humans and structures? Let's find out as Ray Pelayo reports. This picture was taken by a netizen last May 22 while a heavy rain poured in Metro Manila. It seems that a lightning hit a tall building. This picture taken in Manila also shows a series of lightning strikes that looks like roots in the sky. Did you know that lightning strikes on the ground 1.4 billion times a year? It may carry around 15 million volts of electricity and a temperature of around 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is five times hotter than the sun. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA said the lightning is extremely dangerous. Any conductor, maari pong tamaan niya. So kasama po ang tao dyan at mga hayop. So uh, dahil po yan sa discharge ng electromagnetic energy from the thunderstorm. So, More than 300 reindeer died in 2016 in Switzerland which was believed to be caused by lightning. This is what happened when a lightning strikes a tree. Just imagine if the same strikes a human. Pagasa said if a person is caught in an area where lightning activities are ongoing, one may do this position. Yung charge, kailang magpas lang sa ground. So, kalma lang din ganun. Para yung flow ng charge, diretso sa ground. Hindi mag-aan sa iyo mag- Apo, mag yeah. High-rise structures that are more vulnerable to lightning installs arresters so electrical charge will be absorbed by the ground instead of affecting appliances and other conductors. In other countries, lightning arresters are installed in residential areas. Ang lakas ng kidlat natin talaga, high, ca high current yan, high voltage yan, high current yan. Kaya pag tumama yan sa isang structure, maninira talaga. Pagasa advised the public to go and stay inside a concrete structure during lightning activity. Ray Pelayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. A zipline flight from Paris' iconic Eiffel Tower is offering thrill seekers a once in a lifetime opportunity to see the city from above. Jovic Bermas will tell us why. It's the ride not quite suitable for the faint hearted. At 115 meters in the air, brave plungers are granted a spectacular view of France. As they descend down 800 meters across to the Champs de Mars at speeds of 88 kilometers per hour, the zipline ride offers thrill seekers an experience that takes off from the Eiffel Tower and ends up in a Colomelitar in just 60 seconds. The feeling? Well, it's a descent where you feel like it's going to go really quickly, and it does go quickly, and it's windy. But you have time too. You have time and you can properly enjoy it. It's great! And having the time to enjoy it and see all the scenery on a grand scale is the best thing about it. It's not the first time the zip line has been open for tourists to use. Originally, it was set up in 2017 to celebrate the French Open and to coincide with the 130th anniversary of the Eiffel Tower. Members of the public will have the opportunity to experience the zip line for free, having been selected through an online draw on social media. The ride will be open until 11th of June. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, Europe. Some local government units inspect stores after the Food and Drug 
administrations recall order yesterday on pork and pork products from countries affected by the African swine fever. Ray Pelayo explains why. The Dinalupihan Bataan Municipal Veterinary Office has recorded over 800 cans of maling pork luncheon meat recall during their inspection in stores in their area. This move is in accordance with the Food and Drug Administration or FDA's recall order on May 28 on all pork-based products manufactured and coming from countries affected by the African Swine Fever or ASF. The products have been set aside and are waiting for FDA's action. Dinalupihan Municipal Veterinarian Dr. Paul Tolentino Foronda suggested they should be authorized to dispose of the products to remove the risk of the possible spread of the African Swine Fever virus. Elsewhere, the Paranaque City government is doing the same measure. This supermarket in Metro Manila is still selling maling manufactured before the Department of Agriculture or DA's import ban order in August 2018. The supermarket group's problem now is how to dispose of their pork-based goods. Yung impact na nandang mo sa amin, short term, yun ang mangyayari. Okay, pag-away lang kami supplier namin. Kasi siyempre, hindi niya pa, binili na niya, binayaran na niya, mas huli pa niya sa amin. Ngayon, kung meron silang mga item, hindi lang naman yun ang item na karga nila, palit pa lang, swap. At di paano naman si importer. Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinyol, for his part, said he will ask the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG to order the Philippine National Police and the LGUs to help the DA and the FDA in implementing the recall order and to monitor violators. According to Secretary Pinyol, the ASF is a deadly disease of hogs which has no vaccination and no known cure. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue. Yes, on city. A consumer group urges the government to monitor the prices of meat and processed pork products in the local market. This after a series of memoranda issued by the Agriculture Department in relation to the issue on African swine fever. My Bermudez will tell us why. The DTI naman, as a Department of Agriculture, magmonitor po tayo ng presyo. Makita po natin kung tumataas at meron na namang nakikinabang dito sa takot at issue na ito. This was the appeal of consumer group Laban Consumer after the Food and Drug Administration or FDA added to its list more countries where pork and processed pork products are temporarily banned. The FDA ordered on Tuesday the recall of pork products from countries affected by African swine fever. Laban Consumer says aside from the government, the responsibility to warn the public on where to buy meats also lies on importers. Pag, uh, sa Consumer Act, sa, sa Food Safety Act, uh, may karapatan ang uh, Food and Drug Administration mag-issue ng recall and then mag-conduct ng quick hearing no, ha? whether to continue the recall on a permanent basis or to leave it. The Bureau of Animal Industry says their regulation via pre-border measures continue to ensure that the entry of pork products will be blocked. Ang pinaka-recent na naban is Hong Kong, yun yung mag, uh, nagkaroon sila ng case. I think it was two or three weeks ago. Mm -mm. So, yung mismong memo nga lang, wala pa kaming copy, I believe it's still with the Secretary's Office. Ang, mag ang kagandahan naman sa baay, once banned siya at the DA level, lahat ng meat and meat products, uh, pork products, napakasok sa atin. Yung mga imported goods natin na okay. ating pork na siya o kaya processed na pork, ano siya, uh, banned na talaga siya. Bantayan po nila yung, yung local hog industry, no? Huwag din tayo pa sisiguro na 100% swine applicant proof free yan. No? At ma-importante yun. Otherwise, uh, pag pinamaan ng industriyan lokal, ay tama talaga ang bulsa ng mga consumer. May Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The massive corruption and tara system in the Bureau of Customs still exists. During Senator Panfilo Laxon's privilege speech, he challenged BOC Chief Ray Leonardo Guerrero to resolve the rooted corruptions in the agency. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. 
Senator Panfilo Lacson in his privilege speech expresses dismay over the cases of illegal shipment that entered the ports of Manila. He first cited the shipment of garbage from Canada and then the 5-ton garbage South Korea exported to the Philippines in July and October 2018. The senator said the country now is the official dump site of the Southeast Asia. He also presented the series of shipment of illegal drugs in the country that includes the 6.4 billion pesos worth of shabu discovered in Valenzuela City in May 2017. The 4 billion pesos worth of shabu discovered in the abandoned Vecaba shipment at the Manila International Container Port. And just last week, the 1 billion peso worth shabu seized in Malabon. Senator Larson questioned the customs officials and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency why they had agreed to auction the illegal shipments, hoping to draw out possible members of syndicates. The Bureau averred that it deliberately placed the shipment containing illegal drugs for auction, which was later bidded out and won by Goldbean Commercial. <clears throat> Let's assume for a while that we are buying their story. Question is, is the BOC legally allowed to subject prohibited goods to public sale or auction? Amid the illegal shipments, according to Senator Lacson, indeed the corruptions in the BOC still exist. According to him, the TARA system in the agency is still in effect. In the TARA system, customs officials are allegedly being paid off to let shipments through. For the office of the commissioner, an average of 5,000 pesos per container plus 10% of the collections of each section or office directly under OCOM or Office of the Commissioner. 3,000 for Intelligence Group, 1,000 to 2,000 pesos for the Enforcement Group, 3,000 pesos for the Risk Management Office, and 2,000 to 3,000 pesos for the Import and Assessment Service or IAS. Kung kanikanino napupunta ang nasabing mga tara for his office, or the Office of the Commissioner, I will leave it to General Guerrero to, to investigate and find out. The MICP and POM district offices received 3,000 pesos per container. Each container with alert order may be charged as high as 50,000 pesos. Holy cow! But the senator clarified that BOC chief Ray Leonardo is somehow not involved in the corruptions presently happening in the agency. But he challenged the commissioner to uphold his integrity and principles. The said issues of continuous corruptions is a test of Guerrero's leadership, according to Senator Lacson. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Department of Health may release next week the regulations on the use of electronic cigarettes in the country. Meanwhile, the Finance Department plans an imposing tax on e-cigarettes. Ayoko Miguel tells us why. The Department of Health or DOH Executive Committee say they plan to sign the regulations of the use of electronic or e-cigarettes in the country soon. According to DOH Assistant Secretary Attorney Shared Mercado Grande, it is possible the regulations will be issued in the first week of June. This after the recommendation of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control or WHO FCTC, which states that there should be a regulation or ban on the use of e-cigarettes once proven there are harmful chemicals found in them, like those found in traditional cigarettes, which cause cancer and other dreadful diseases. There's no total ban, but more of regulation lang po muna yung ating gagawin man. The DOH explained they still have to examine all the chemicals used in vapes before totally banning them in the market and for public consumption. I'll check on the classification if it is considered as pharmaceutical or kung ano yung specific classification niya. But definitely, anything na ipapasok natin sa katawan, na tingin natin lalo na kung may mga pag-aaral po na hindi ito maganda sa katawan, eh kailangan po ng protektahan po ng DOH. The Department of Finance or DOF, meanwhile, is continuously coordinating with the Health Department for the imposition of taxes on e-cigarettes, according to Finance Department under Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua. It is a challenge for them to gather information on vape because there is no law yet on its usage. As I mentioned, this is a, a less regulated market. Eh? And unlike yung cigarette na outside the factory, may BIR na nagbabantay. Kasi ang excise works like this. Eh? Paglabas ng factory, pay tax. 
ito kasi these are largely imported. So so we are working to understand the market better. The DOF will propose to the Senate to include e-cigarettes among the products in which to impose excise tax. And eventually, uh, we will see a shifting from traditional cigarette to the e-cigarette. And the moment we determine the health risk, we will, of course, uh, propose the appropriate tax. So I think uh, the funding will continue. Po. The collected funds will be used for the implementation of the government's universal health care program, according to their proposal. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Armed Forces of the Philippines lowers their alert level to normal from red level during the recent elections, but will tighten security for the school opening. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. The Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP lowered their alert level from red to normal after the midterm elections. But AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Edgard Arevalo said they will tighten the security on the opening of classes on Monday, especially in Mindanao. Arevalo added, the AFP leadership has issued directives to the ground personnel to have strict implementation of security in school vicinities. Nagdideclare tayo ng alert status natin depende sa nakikita nating pangangailangan. Now this time, wala naman tayo nakikita ng ganun kalaki o kaseryosong banta ba o pangangailangan upang gawin natin yung red alert status kagaya ng ginawa nating paghahanda para sa eleksyon. Arevalo added martial law is still implemented in Mindanao so AFP troops are visible in the region and have been deployed in areas with high level of threats such as Sulu. It also aims not to give terrorists a chance to cause trouble in the opening of classes. Yung Brigada Eskwela ay naging malaki ang papel ng inyong mga kawal at nagpapatuloy pa yung ibang areas ano, tungkol sa uh, Brigada Eskwela upang hindi lamang ihanda ang seguridad para sa ating mga estudyante kundi ang maging pisikal na kahandaan ng kanilang mga para lang. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. A man who was seen in a video driving his car from the front passenger seat is facing serious charges for reckless driving. Joan Nano will tell us why. In a video posted and shared on social media, the person was seen driving a vehicle in daytime traffic from the passenger seat while smoking and fiddling with its horn. He can also be heard bragging about his violation in the video. <laughs> The video was originally posted on the Facebook account of a certain Nico Lopez last May 25. It was shared on social media group JDM Tayo Pops by Facebook user Axel Farinas, which drew criticisms from internet users. But instead of showing remorse, Lopez even taunted his critics to do something about it if they can. A netizen who got peeved with Lopez brought the matter to the attention of the authorities. In a post on Twitter, the DOTR confirmed that the man in the video was identified as Miko Lopez and that he will be summoned to answer the issue. The DOTR further stated that Lopez's license will be revoked and he will also be disqualified from applying for a driver's license again in the future. In a separate statement, LTO Executive Director Romeo Veracruz chastised Lopez's antics, saying this poses a danger to himself and other people. DOTR Undersecretary for Road Transport Mark De Leon meanwhile said that this incident should serve as a stern warning and called on the public to report this kind of violation to merit swift action. John Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Guests, local and international, entered the Palace of Versailles for a one-of-a-kind event, which for them is enough to relive, to relive the 18th century. Nina Armilio will tell us why. <laughs> Hundreds of guests donned soaring wigs and elaborate 18th century dress to indulge their royal fantasies at a ball at the Palace of Versailles on Monday, themed around one of its most infamous inhabitants, Marie Antoinette. 
the French queen was one of France's most controversial and fashionable historical figures before she met her end at the guillotine in 1793, executed for high treason by the revolutionaries who had deposed and killed her husband, King Louis XVI. Entertainment director at Palace of Versailles, Laurent Bronner, said foreign guests outnumbered locals for the first time this year. Depuis que nous faisons ces fêtes galantes, Since we started hosting these costume parties, people come from all over the world and they have the night of their dreams here because there's no place more beautiful than Versailles. Guests could view the private chambers of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, as well as areas usually closed to the public. Baroque dance lessons and guided visits were part of the night's program. Some 630 visitors paid between 150 and 510 euros or 168 to 570 dollars to attend, with the most expensive tickets granting access to the whole palace and a private concert in the Queen's room. And it's a dream. Where we're from, we're from Houston, Texas. We don't have a lot of events that cater to this style of clothing. It took a year's work of sewing to finally get there, but we got there. Come because last year I came first time, really enjoyed, and we decided I need to share with my friends this beautiful, beautiful event. It's unbelievable. It uh, was enough of memory for whole year. This year is the fifth edition of the Versailles Fête Galante, which is part of the annual Festival of Versailles. The Palace and Gardens of Versailles, which served as a royal residence from 1682 to 1789, are one of France's most popular tourist destinations, with around 8 million people visiting each year. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Being one of the four teams taking part in the UNTV Cup off-season games, Barangay Hinebra legends gear up before getting back to the hardcore action. They promise not just entertainment, but also serious basketball in the name of helping their fellow PBA legends. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Undeniably, Barangay Ginebra is one of those teams in the professional basketball scene in the country with a huge fandom. Who will forget the legends instructed and led by coach Robert Jaworski, the Gin Kings. And as the UNTV Cup offseason begins, Team Ginebra gear up before they take on their rival teams, Pure Foods, Alaska and San Miguel. After a years long wait, thrill, excitement and heart-pounding action are in store for basketball fans brought by the Gin Kings themselves older as they are now, who are back in hardcore action. Oh, expect nila mababagal. <laughs> expect nila mababagal na kami. Yun, pero syempre, andun pa rin yung, ano, no, yung uh, pride ng isa't isa, no? yung, yung competitiveness. No? Syempre, karamihan naman dyan, mga competitive yan. Eh. Kahit na sabi mo mababagal na yan, lahat yan ayaw magpatalo. No? Ang advantage namin is yung never say die spirit. Na no matter what happen, Laban kami ng laban. Yun naman talaga ang Ginebra. The team promises not just entertainment, but also serious basketball. Iba-iba pagka ano na, nandun na sa game. Ang halangan namin, una, parang katuwaan lang eh. Pero nung tumatagal, medyo nagkaka-pisikalan, may medyo nagkakatamaan ng konti. So ano pa rin, seryosong basketball pa rin. This isn't just for us, this isn't just for our own personal whatever at all. It's really for fun, number you know, uh, number one, and and at the same time we're having fun, we're helping others. So we've grown to love this game so much, and and the game has given us so much. So it's time for us to give back something. Barangay Hinebra is composed of Bal David, Vince Hizon, JJ Helterbrand, Rudy Distrito, Twin Tower EJ File, and Mario Aquino, Bob Jose, Bennett Palad, Benny Cheng, Mike Orquillas, Banjo Calpito and Pido Jarencio. The month-long UNTV Cup off-season PBA Legends face-off begins on June 2 at the Pasig City Sports Center. Una-una, maraming maraming salamat sa supportang binigay sa amin ni Kuya Daniel, no, yung UNTV. 
motivate namin kayo manood, suportahan ang PBA rivalry. Saan po namin kayo? Salamat po. Magkita-kita po tayo doon, Ena. Eh, God bless. Through the UNTV Cup off-season games, the PBA Legends get to donate to the PBA Legends Foundation to help their fellow legendary pro hoopsters who are in need. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Several transport groups will ask the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB to provide loading and unloading zones for UV Express vans following the order limiting its operations from terminal to terminal only. Joe Anano tells us why. Transport Group Stop and Go Coalition and the Lawyers of Commuter Safety and Protection will appeal to the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB to provide loading and unloading zones for UV Express vans. This after the LTFRB announced the strict enforcement of prohibiting UV Express van drivers from loading and unloading passengers not within their designated terminals. According to June Magno, the president of Stop and Go Coalition, their move aims not to burden the passengers affected by the new traffic regulation. He added that the income of the drivers might be affected since the passengers might opt to use other modes of transportation than to take UV Express vans. The group will submit their position paper to the LTFRB on Monday. <laughs> The Lawyers for Commuter Safety and Protection has the same call. According to Attorney Ariel Inton, the president of the group, they have sent a letter to the Department of Transportation asking the agency to consider providing selective stops for the UV Express vans. Mga galing ng SM Fed before instance, no, ang trabaho nila dito sa Quezon City Hall. Pero wala naman prangkisang UV Express na SM Fed to City Hall. So, meron, Kubaw, Makati. So, ibig sabihin, doon pa sila bababa, saka sila babalik. In a statement, the LTFRB reiterated the strict enforcement of UB Express operating only from terminal to terminal. LTFRB Chairman Martin Dalga pointed out they have conducted consultations on this since last year, so the operators are aware that operating outside their terminals is a breach of their franchise. Meanwhile, the Stop and Go Coalition is calling on the suspension of excise tax on petroleum products. Instead of asking for fair hike, the group emphasized it will be better if the government suspends the imposition of excise tax. <laughs> Last year, the issue on fair hike became controversial due to several oil price hikes combined with additional tax plus the continuous oil price increase in the world market. It was in November last year when the LTFRB approved the 10 peso minimum fare for jeepneys. But after a month, the board decided to lower it to 9 pesos after a series of oil price rollbacks. But since the early part of this year, several oil prices have been implemented combined with the effect of the second tranche of the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion or Train Law. Because of this, a lot of jeepney operators and drivers are complaining over their income loss as they are still waiting for the LTFRB to finalize the formula for the adjustable fare matrix scheme. Joa Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And for the news abroad, Huawei Technologies said it asked a U.S. court to throw out U.S. legislation that bars federal agencies from buying its products. Here's Beverly Saison to tell us why. China's Huawei Technologies Company Limited said on Wednesday that it has filed a motion for a summary judgment in its lawsuit against the U.S. government in the telecoms equipment maker's latest attempt to fight sanctions from Washington that threatened to push it out of global markets. The motion filed late on Tuesday in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Texas asked to declare the 2019 National Defense Authorization Act or NDAA unconstitutional in an update to the lawsuit against the act that the Chinese company started in March. We believe that U.S. politicians are using cybersecurity as an excuse to gain public support for actions they, they are designed to achieve other goals. 
These actions will do nothing to make networks more secure. The NDAA bill passed into the law by the U.S. Congress last summer places a broad ban on federal agencies and their contractors from using Huawei equipment on national security grounds, citing the company's ties with the Chinese government. Huawei has repeatedly denied it is controlled by the Chinese government, military, or intelligence services. Huawei has confidence in the independence and integrity of the U.S. judicial system. We hope that mistakes in the NDA can be corrected by the court. As always, ensuring cybersecurity is Huawei's top priority. The world's largest telecom network gear maker has since faced even greater sanctions as the U.S. Commerce Department on May 16th put the firm on a trade blacklist that bans companies from doing business with Huawei in a move which immediately disrupted the global tech sector. The ban comes amid an escalating trade dispute between the world's two biggest economies. Huawei has been given a 90-day reprieve from the ban, has denied its products pose a security threat, and protested Washington's attempt to limit its business. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. Meanwhile, more than 50,000 primary and high school teachers have gone on strike in the biggest industrial action ever seen in New Zealand schools. Meanwhile, at least two persons were killed and hundreds were injured as a rapid-fire line of tornadoes tore across Indiana and Ohio. Jovic Burmas will tell us why. In the USA, severe weather has brought a string of tornadoes to parts of the Midwest and elsewhere in the U.S., causing significant destruction in Kansas, Ohio and Indiana, where several counties were placed under emergency warnings Monday and Tuesday. At least two people have died and hundreds injured. According to the Weather Channel, several buildings and houses have significant damage in communities on the western edge of Kansas City, and heavy rain falling on already saturated soil flooding concerns. More than 10,000 people have been in and around Kansas City, electric services supplier Western Energy said. In Syria, Seven people had been killed on Tuesday from Syrian government and Russian airstrikes in the northwest of the country. War Monitor, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, or SOHR, reported. Government airstrikes backed by Russia have focused on the south of Idlib province and nearby parts of Hama, uprooting nearly 250,000 people. The Syrian civil defense, also known as the White Helmets, released videos on Tuesday showing rescuers pulling people from underneath collapsed buildings in the village of Sfuhen. The SOHR said a woman was killed from barrel bombs in Sfuhen, but that the death toll was expected to rise. The bombardment has killed 229 civilians, injured 727, and forced more than 300,000 people to flee since April 28. In New Zealand, tens of thousands of New Zealand teachers walked off the job on Wednesday in protest as they called for higher pay and shorter hours in the country's largest ever education strike. Almost 50,000 secondary and primary school teachers joined the strike, according to their unions closing schools around the nation. The strike came a day before Jacinda Ardern's government was set to release its first well-being budget, which had been touted globally as a new approach to fiscal decision-making, guided by a broader range of indicators to improve New Zealanders' living standards. Unions working on behalf of teachers have been negotiating with the government for months for pay rises and measures to reduce workloads, but so far have ended in deadlock. Meanwhile, New Zealand police have been asked to investigate after the Treasury Office said its systems were hacked in an attempt to reach documents on the forthcoming budget in the biggest cybersecurity scandal to hit Parliament. Billed as the world's first well-being budget, putting well-being of New Zealanders at the forefront of fiscal spending, 
The document was scheduled to be officially released on Thursday. But late on Tuesday, the Treasury Office said it had gathered sufficient evidence that its systems had been deliberately and systematically hacked, with more than 2,000 attempts recorded over a 48-hour period from Sunday. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. With the advent of the internet and modern technology, businesses step up the speed of their transactions and processes, but it sometimes it can't just be avoided. There are other establishments that frustrate their clients with sluggish service. Watch this netizen's funny way of expressing his frustration as Mon Hoxon reports. I do not want to see the Filipino queuing outside. Ayaw ko yan. Especially yung mahirap. It, 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 it might be a pretended uh, sentiment, whatever you would call it, to do the unbeliever. Basta ayaw ko, lalo na yung mga taga-probinsya. Lalo na yung taga-probinsya na magastos pagpupunta rito, tapos maubos na ang swedo ka babalik. Tapos pabalik-balikin mo ng araw, ah, basta lukuhan na yan. President Rodrigo Duterte has said it. He hates long queues, especially in government offices. This is why the President has ordered to speed up the processing of applications, documents, and transactions offered by government agencies. But it seems that the government has no control over what transpires in private institutions. In fact, a video has gone viral on social media, which shows a netizen's funny way of expressing his vexation while waiting inside the bank. According to Luis Gino, he thought of making the video while waiting for his turn in the bank. The video is a bit exaggerated because it is intended for fun. It began with Luis looking at the queue number. His was 93, while the one being served was number 63. Luis then showed himself walking out of the bank, getting in his car and then driving home. Once at home, he decided to do his laundry. After which, Luis got hungry and decided to prepare a snack. He even showed the complete process in preparing the food. But that's not all. He even managed to watch a cartoon show while enjoying his snack. After doing the laundry, cooking, eating, and watching TV, he got in his car and drove back to the bank. Once in the bank, he glanced at his queue number. He got frustrated yet again because the one being served was only number 64. Again, this video is just for fun. And we all know that not all banks transact at this pace. Currently, the video has over 2 million views and have some 24,000 shares with almost 2,000 likes. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this May 29, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. May I just assure you that during my time, I said there will be no corruption. And every Japanese investor in my country, however small, or however big, I can assure you that if there is any complaint regarding hindrances, obstruction, or outright corruption, let me know. And you can ask an audience with me in 24 hours, and I will talk to you. And just let me know what your problem is and we will kill that problem.
past several years sa matandaan ko talaga, hindi magkapartido yung presidente at ang vice president niya. So from the beginning, hindi sila talaga pareho ng plataforma. Malago yan, ma. In practice sa Pilipinas, ay malago. Ang chance lang niya talaga kung merong vacancy sa opisina ng presidente. Yung impact na nalang mo sa amin, short term, yun ang mangyayari. Okay, pag-away na kami sa supplier namin. Kasi siyempre, hindi niya pwede. Binili na rin niya, binayaran na niya, mas solid na niya sa amin. The Bureau averred that it deliberately placed the shipment containing illegal drugs for auction, which was later bidded out and won by Goldwyn Commercial. Let's assume for a while that we are buying their story. Question is, Is the BOC legally allowed to subject prohibited goods to public sale or auction? This isn't just for us. This isn't just for our own personal whatever at all. It's really for fun, number you know, uh, number one. And, and at the same time, we're having fun. We're helping others. So we've grown to love this game so much, and, and the game has given us so much. So it's time for us to give back something.